Hello, this is Joyce Latimer from Virginia Tech, and on our last blog on the Find America's website, I promised you some more information on the PGR effects on root growth. So we're going to talk about that today in this little video. Before I start, I do want to thank Fine Americas for supporting this video series for the blog series, allowing us to get more of this information out to you in multiple forms. But I also want to thank them for funding a lot of the research that you're going to see in this video. Several years ago, we were doing some research with using plant growth regulators on daylilies, and we found some significant growth responses. We did not, however, harvest shoots or roots for dry weight analysis. But as you can imagine, some of these plants made their way to my home garden. And I was rather dismayed that some of these plants had very few roots. So it got us to looking at some additional work and the objective of this work was to determine the effect of concise uniconazole on the shoot and the root growth of several herbaceous perennial plants. And we wanted to see the effect of these applications as sprays, substrate drenches, or liner soaks. We looked at several different crops, and I'm going to give you some of those here. First of all, we did do a daylily trial. We used bare root number one single divisions, and these were a little small as it turns out for our test. We also looked at Penstemon Husker Red, and our treatments, as I said, we used concise at spray applications, drench applications, or liner soaks. The rates varied somewhat with the crops. Liner soaks were two minutes applied the day before potting. The spray or the drenches were made two weeks after potting. We did look at height, width, and dry weight of both the roots and the shoots weekly through six weeks or seven after treatment. We looked at this to calculate the root to shoot dry weight ratios. A higher root to shoot dry weight ratio has been correlated with an improvement in transplant establishment under field conditions. Now I recognize that a lot of our ornamentals don't really go into field conditions, but it is an indication that the plant is more transplantable, more uh, will take off more quickly in the garden. So that was the measure we were looking for, looking at that difference. So what did we find? First of all, with our Pink Song Daylily, we did not get any significant effects on growth in terms of shoot uh, height or uh, shoot or root dry weight. However, there was a slight increase in the root dry weight on our high spray rate and a slight decrease in the shoot dry weight of that, of that same plant. So if we look at the data on that, just look at our control line here and our high spray rate here, you can see that we had no difference in our height. However, we had a slight reduction in shoot dry weight. We had a slight increase in root dry weight, which means the ratio of the root dry weight to shoot dry weight was higher in our treated plant. So again, it should indicate an improvement in transplant establishment. Um, we don't always see an improvement and an increase in the root to shoot ratio, but when we do, it should indicate the plant will take off in the landscape more quickly. When we looked at Husker Red, it was very responsive to the concise. The treatments either as a drench or as the sprays gave us significant reductions in height, width, shoot dry weights, but not in root dry weights. If you look at the, the same picture with the spray applications, the liner soak as well, again reductions in shoot dry weight, but not in the root dry weight. So let's look at the data for just these higher rates on our treatments. You can see that all of the treatments decreased plant height and the, our drench and our spray decreased our shoot dry weight, not significantly different with our liner soak. There was no significant effect on our root dry weight. They were slightly decreased, but it was not significantly different from the control. So the root uh, to shoot ratio then is what we wanted to look at. And we can see that the first treatments, our drench and our liner soak, had no effect on our root to shoot ratio. But this combination of reduction in shoot weight and root dry weight, not having as much of a reduction in root dry weight as we did in shoot dry weight, 
we had actually a 43% increase in our root to shoot ratio. A couple of other crops that we looked at as plants allowed, uh, Phlox paniculata, the shoot dry weight was reduced 25% by our spray treatment, but there was no significant effect on root dry weight. So again, we had a tendency for the increase in the root to shoot ratio. It was not significant, but it tended to increase. Then with Lobelia cardinalis, you can see with a one part per million liner soak of concise, there's no obvious difference in growth regulation. However, when we harvested those plants, we actually had a shoot dry weight reduction of 52% in that liner soak plant. That was significantly different from control. The root dry weight was reduced 41%, which was not significantly different from control. It shows you the variability that we have in root growth. The reduction was similar in terms of shoot dry weight and root dry weight, and there was no significant difference in the root to shoot ratios between the treated and untreated plant. So in summary, do PGO applications reduce root growth? You betcha. Is this reduction in root growth a problem? It really all depends, but probably not. As long as your growth regulator applications are at appropriate rates for regulation of those shoots, then your roots are generally going to be fine. The reduction in root growth is comparable to what we see in the shoot growth. So they stay in proportion. If you stunt a plant, you stunt the shoots, you're definitely going to be stunting the roots as well. So yes, growth regulators affect both the shoots and the roots. The growth of the shoots and the roots will be proportional and give you a comparable root to shoot ratio to your controls or sometimes a higher root to shoot ratio with your treated plants. So in some cases, some of our landscape situations that are less protected, we may find an improvement with the establishment of these plants with respect to that higher root to shoot ratio along with all the other benefits that we already know we can attribute to the use of plant growth regulators. So again, thanks to Fine Americas and I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of PGR effects on root growth. Have a great day.